In lecture three, uh, part two video, we're going to talk about applications of the modulus operator because it is a pretty powerful operator. Um, with the modulus operator, you can um, do something like this where if I gave you 137 cents and I wanted you to basically make change using quarters, dimes, nickels, and cents, and I wanted you to use the least number of coins, then what you're going to do is you're going to try and first figure out how many quarters you can get out of it. Now, um, this is an example of pseudocode, kind of. It, it, it would mimic what we would do in an actual program. Um, but we're not at the point of being able to write this in a program yet, but soon, believe it or not, you will be. So let's say if I have 137 cents, if I divide by 25, because 25 cents are in a quarter, I know I'm going to need a um, five quarters. Now this is 125 cents, which means I have left over a remainder of 12. And I can find that remainder obviously by saying, okay, 137 minus 125, but I don't have to. I can use my modulus operator and get that 12 cents. Now that I have 12 cents left over, I know I have no more room for quarters. Um, I can figure out how many dimes I have. Now dimes are worth 10 cents. So if I do some integer division, I'll see that I'm able to get one dime, and which basically means I have two cents left over. Now that's us doing it, but how would I program that algorithmically in a computer? Well, instead of having to say, okay, that was 10 cents subtracted from 12, we have this ability to find the remainder using a remainder operator. And that'll still give us the two cents that we have. Now, you and I both know that we can't get a nickel out of it, but if I'm trying to break this down into steps that I would eventually program, I do want to go through from quarters to dimes to nickels to pennies. So in the computer, I would have it calculate how many nickels there would be, and it would say, oh, there's zero nickels, and so I would still have the two cents left over, um, which again, I could figure out by using the modulus thing, uh, operator, and then so then I could figure out how many pennies I have. And you're like, well, this seems kind of simple, but remember, our whole goal is being able to take a problem and break it down into steps that we could then encode. So even though in the real world, you might not have gone through each of these steps, this idea of alternating between division and remainder is very powerful. Um, I could even use this to, for example, uh, I'll just add a new one, um, break a number into its corresponding digits. Okay, so this is in um, the thousands place, right? So if I were to take this number and divide it by a thousand, I would be left with one. And then if I said, okay, well, what is remaining when I divide by a thousand, I'd get 234. And then I could take that 234 and say, okay, well, what do I get when I divide by a hundred? And the answer is two. And then the question is, what is remaining when I re divide by a hundred? And the answer is 34. And then with 34, what do I get when I divide by 10? And the answer is 3. And then what is remaining when I divide by 10? And the answer is 4. What you'll notice is I've basically separated my number into its corresponding digits. And so this is, like I said, this combination of integer division and the remainder operator is pretty powerful because it allows you to break things into smaller groups, okay? Another way that it's used is to determine evenness or oddness of a number or if a number um, is a multiple of another number. Now, if a number is even, that means it divides evenly by two. Well, if it divides evenly by two, that means there is no remainder when I divide by two. So like if I say 14 mod 2, I'm going to get 7 remainder 0, right? I'm going to get a remainder of 0. And we all know that 14 is even. But if I had done three, 13 modulus 2, well, that'll be a 6 remainder 1, right? Um, you'll notice that here my remainder is going to be 1. So if I do modulus 2 and I get a 0, we know our number is going to be even. And if I do modulus 2 and I get 1, I know my remainder is odd. And I could do the same thing with any multiples. 
Um, it doesn't have to be a multiple of two, it could be multiple of three, multiple of five, multiple of 10. Um, basically, if you take the remainder of dividing by that number and it's zero, you know it divides evenly. So that's a pretty powerful thing. And we'll see these as we start to write more and more complex algorithms. So even though it may be above your head right now, just kind of see where we're headed and get excited that you're gonna learn some pretty powerful things.